That's not what that's talking about. God created us to have fellowship with us. God created us to enjoy our fellowship. He wants us to, to, to learn to praise Him, to learn to glorify Him, and to learn that He's always in control every minute of the day, every, every, every second, every hour. God is in control. He has never lost control. And our job is, as just simply, our job is to live in such a way that people can see Jesus Christ living in us and we can praise Him and glorify Him. And, and no, matter what the, no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what the situation is, we can praise God with all of our heart because He is God. Secondly, when the situation seems hopeless, we need to praise the Lord because the battle is in his hands. Now, the prophet here, Jehaziel, was a prophet that God raised up for this moment. And he said in verse 17, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Man, what great words. That's all we need, folks. That God will be with us. Jehoshaphat was a good king that lived for the Lord. Let me take you over to chapter 17. And let me read verses 3 through 6. 2 Chronicles 17, let me begin with verse 3 and read those, those verses down through 6. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Balaam, but sought to the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. You know, when you serve the Lord, God will bless you. That's just a rule of life. If we don't serve God, we're going to have trouble. If we obey the Lord and we serve the Lord and we honor the Lord and we praise the Lord, He's going to bless us. I heard, I've heard it put this way. Uh, I think uh, uh, I heard a, a famous minister put it this way. He said he made a promise to God. He made a covenant with God. He said, Lord, I'll take care of your business if you'll take care of my business. Folks, if we just take care of God's business, He'll take care of us. Let me begin with verse 4 again. But sought the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presence and he had riches and honor in abundance. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. And you go on and read there, you read there about this great, great man, this great king Jehoshaphat. He was in trouble. Now there were times in his life when he wasn't in trouble. There's just times in our life that things go better than at other times. But here was a guy who had lived for the Lord when he wasn't in trouble. It's so important. to obey the Lord and to live for God. It's so important. I, I, I think of it this way. You know, when I get in trouble, I want a record of prayer in my life. I don't want to have to go to the Lord. And, you know, God's merciful. I don't say He won't hear you at, at a time of emergency. If you hadn't prayed a prayer and you go to God in prayer, I won't say He won't hear you. But I, I would a lot rather go to the Lord uh, like this man, Jehoshaphat. I would like a record that I have prayed and I've been the right kind of guy and I, I've tried to live holy for you, Lord. I've tried to do your will. I've tried to follow you. I've tried to glorify you. And now I'm in, tr I'm in trouble. And Lord, I'm asking you for your help. This guy had lived for the Lord. Now the promises of God are to the faithful. Now you listen to me. The blessings of God are to the faithful. You're not going to find promises of God in the Bible for people who are quitters. 
You're not going to find the promises of God in the Bible for backsliders. You're not going to find the promises of God in the Bible for people who are worldly and carnal and who don't want to serve Him. God blesses people who love Him. It's important to grow close, close to the Lord. You know, Jehoshaphat stood on the promises of God and in order for us to claim God's promises, the first thing is we need to get saved and be sure that we're saved. There's so many people today that I don't think understand the concept, if I can call it a concept, the reality, the concept of being born again, having the Spirit of God in their heart, having surrendered their heart to the Lord. But the first thing is to be saved. And the second thing is a person has to live for the Lord, be faithful to the Lord. And when a person is saved, there are two things that are obvious in their life. And I want you to think about these two things for a moment. First of all, when a person is really saved, he lives for the Lord. Think about that for a moment. There's so many people today who claim to be saved, but they don't really live for the Lord. Their whole life is, not, is, is about themselves. In 1 John, the second chapter, verse 4, listen to this verse. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Now the Apostle John wrote that. He knew Jesus, walked with Jesus for over three years. He says, to, for someone to profess to be a Christian, to say, I know Jesus Christ, I'm saved, and not keep his word, not keep his commandments, that person is a liar. You see what he's saying here? He says when a person gets saved that they need to give their life to the Lord and their life is about serving Jesus Christ. They live for Jesus Christ. Who do you live for today? Do you live for self? Do you live for the material things of life? The Bible says when you get saved, you live for Jesus. A person who saved their whole life is about Jesus Christ. When I have a, I have a relative passed away, of course now, a distant relative who was a major league baseball player, and I believe he even played for the Cardinals, not the Cubs. But uh, he stayed with my grandpa when he was a young man before he made it to the major leagues. My grandpa owned a farm. My grandpa was interested in farming. And my dad told this story to me. Because when I was a little boy and he told me we had a relative that made the major leagues, that just, that just boy, that, yeah, man, I, you know, that just made me feel good. And I asked him a lot of questions. And I, I won't give you this guy's name. But anyway, I asked him questions. I said, what kind of guy was he? He said, my grandpa didn't care much for him. He came and stayed one summer, but said, grandpa, it wasn't he didn't like him. He liked the boy, but he didn't get much work out of the boy. He said, all he wanted to do is carry a ball, a baseball and a glove around. He was just all about playing baseball. That's what he cared about the most. Yeah, he did a little work here and a little work there. And when you made him, he did something else. But he was always out behind the barn playing catch or, or doing something. His whole life was centered around baseball. Friend, when you get saved, your whole life is centered around Jesus Christ. Not about me and you and somebody else. You see, it's important to be close to God. It's important to know how to pray. And not only just to know how to speak the words, but it's important to know how to reach up and pray until, you, until God is touched. There are degrees in prayer. You can pray a little bit and be satisfied. Let me tell you, and you've heard me say this many times, prayer is work. You say, well, you know, I just don't feel like praying. I don't feel like praying today. Well, bless your little heart. Pray anyway. 
There's lots of days I went to work. I didn't feel like going to work, but I wanted a paycheck, so I went to work. Listen, if you want the blessings of God, you pray anyway.